All right, so today I want to be talking about my setup. Um, this setup is pretty inexpensive, long lasting, very durable, and probably the best setup anybody could have uh, for a specific budget. You know, if you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on different kinds of rods and reels and just having a lot of them, this rig, you can throw basically anything on it. So first thing, get yourself a nice bait caster. Um, this company is no longer uh, with us, but you know, that's okay. Just get yourself a good quality bait caster. I cast pretty far. I wouldn't spend anything over 120 bucks on a bait caster though. And then for the rod, I wouldn't spend anything over 40 bucks for. But what I would do is I would get medium heavy action with a fast tip. And what that's going to allow you to do is the medium heavy part is going to be able to pretty much horse in any fish that you can catch for bass. Um, so yeah, medium heavy action rod. That will allow you to fight fish and have some strength, good hook setting ability and a fast tip which is pretty flimsy and then allows you to have sensitivity and keep the hook from pulling out all kinds of good benefits like that what I use for line is I use braid and if you can tell this braid is old and it's worn down this braid has probably been on there for I don't know just just a really long time and it's still very strong um, it doesn't really tend to uh, weaken you know I can typically use braid for about five years before I decide to change it out and obviously that's very economical for most fishermen. Uh, five years is just about as long as you're going to get anything to last. And I only spend, you know, probably 20 bucks on my braid. So 20 bucks for five years. Most people, when they use monofilament, they have to change out, depending on how often you fish, of course. But um, if they were to fish at my uh, frequency, they'd probably have to change it out twice a year, three times a year. And that's pretty costly. It might be, you know, three dollars every time, but over five years that adds up quite a bit. Not counting the cost, the braid still has a lot more benefits than fluoro or mono. And that's because it has zero stretch, or at least very little that, you know, nobody can tell the difference. Um, what that allows you to do is have super high sensitivity, and it allows you to set the hook at a very far distance. So a lot of times I'm fishing lures, you know, with this really, uh, with this really good bait catch that allows me to cast you know, easily 50 yards, allows me to set the hook on fish that if you were using monofilament, you couldn't set the hook on. Uh, that's just because if you guys have ever hung up on something, uh, you can feel how much mono stretches. If you're like 20, 25, 30 yards out, it will probably stretch about four feet before, you know, the force actually makes it to the other end, which is pretty significant. That means that when you set the hook at, you know, 20, 25 yards, which is a pretty standard cast, um, you're going to have to pull up four feet of line before you actually can drive the hook into the fish's mouth. And that's a big deal, especially if you get a, a quick bite from a big fish, you really need to uh, have zero stretch in your line. Also, on the aspect of sensitivity, it's so sensitive that you can feel the difference between twigs and rocks and fish and moss and all that kind of good stuff without, you know, having to set the hook and going, okay, that was a, that was a you know, stick, now I'm hung up. Or, oh, that was a fish, or, oh, that was just a rock, and now I have a you know, nicking my line from setting the hook on a rock. And you might be asking, well, why, why should I use braid if the fish can obviously see it, especially if I'm, you know, a public water fisherman and these fish have been pressured a lot. Well, I don't. I don't go right to the lure with braid. I use the triple surge's knot. And you can see that's fairly small. There's a little bit of fluff here. But rest assured, that knot is definitely able to go through the guys. This is I think 30 pound test braid onto 20 pound test uh, fluorocarbon and for that knot to be that small that's pretty darn good and you can tie this if you get good at it you can tie this within 20 or 30 seconds so it's not a hindrance at all the cool thing about this too is that I was talking about versatility of this rig obviously if I'm just putting on you know a couple yards of, of whatever my leader material is I can switch it out to whatever if I if I want to fish top water I just put on you know 12 to 15 pound test mono or if you want to go heavier, that's fine. 20 pound test mono, 17 pound test mono, that's fine. Um, if I want to go for a more finesse approach, like when I, you know, fish table rock or something that's a very clear body of water, very pressured body of water, I can go down to eight, six pound test if I want to, all on the same rig. So it really allows me to be super versatile, and because of that, it, it saves me a lot of money. I don't have to have five different rods and reels for that same kind of, you know, for those different kinds of setups. You know, this is my frog rod. This is my crankbait rod. This is my topwater rod. This is everything. It's my jig rod. It's everything. And it's because I use this braid and I just substitute out whatever leader I need. Now the braid allows me to have extra strength on my rod too. That's another benefit. 
is that I can have a much flimsier rod, which is going to allow me to have longer casts, more accurate casts, better sensitivity, and still have that strength I need to set the hook on a fish. Because I was saying earlier, when you have to set the hook on a long distance mono, you have to pull up several feet of line before it actually starts driving the hook into the fish's mouth. Um, with braid, that's not, you know, that's not a problem. I can use a light action rod if I wanted to for bass. Not that that would be very effective, but I could with braid. And it just allows me to be super versatile. I can use this with whatever lure I want and whatever line I want, and I just change it out. And basically what that allows me to do is it allows me to forward really, really nice leaders. I typically use Seaguar leader, Seaguar fluorocarbon, super strong, abrasion resistant, really, really high quality line. And instead of having to spool, say, 100 yards of that onto my reel and, you know, waste probably 50 yards of it, you know, just from being on the tight spool, I can just, you know, use every yard of it effectively until it runs out. So basically what I'm saying is get yourself probably about 100 to $150 setup. You know, make sure you're getting a good quality reel and a decent rod. The rod needs to be medium action. Uh, medium or heavy action, I prefer medium heavy with a fast tip. Don't forget the fast tip, that's super, super, super important. Um, and then take some braid. I recommend pretty high quality braid because you can use it for a long time, assuming you don't get a really bad you know, backlash or bird's nest and have to cut stuff out. Um, if you don't have that problem, you can use this line for at least five years before you'd want to change it out. Um, and if you, if you fish a lot less, it might be able to last up you know, 15, 20 years. It's just when you fish a lot, you know, it's just, you know, sun weathering and fish and logs and stuff like that. But basically, with a medium heavy action rod, fast tip, and understanding how to tie this knot, which will be, a, you know, link probably about right here. Um, yeah, you should be good to go. And um, hope that helps. Tight lines, guys.